All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ken Ehlers. I'm the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity of Southeast Ohio. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple things about Habitat uh, and our history. And then I'm also going to talk about our programs and how you can get involved. And, and like Rachel said, we'll have some questions and answers in this section. So um, I want to start off by just talking a little bit about the housing problem. Uh, in the United States. Uh, the problem is really out of control right now. In the United States of America, one in every six families is spending more than 50% of their gross income on housing. And that does not include utilities or insurance or anything like that. It's just straight out mortgage or rent. Um, that's a big problem, uh, especially with the wage, uh, the decline, the, the wage increases are not going as fast as the inflation in the housing market is going. Uh, the definition of affordable, an affordable rent or mortgage is 30% of gross income, which means for a lot of places in Fairfield County, someone would have to be making $19 an hour on a full-time uh, salary or full-time hours in order to obtain safe, affordable housing at current market rates in, in a lot of areas in Fairfield County. And what I mean by safe housing and decent housing is housing that, that is exactly that, not a a trailer out in the middle of nowhere that doesn't have plumbing or heat. Uh, believe it or not, uh, even places like that go for three or four hundred dollars a month. Uh, I know a lot of you probably have seen that uh, or are aware of certain circumstances. Uh, but a lot of people don't understand why the housing, why, why is housing so expensive? What, what's happened in the housing sector? Well, there's a lot of housing shortages across the United States and in Fairfield County that's uh, good. It's absolutely true. Uh, we have a severe housing shortage in the USA. In addition, material costs have increased substantially, which prices a lot of um, people out of, out of the market in terms of being able to afford to make their own, make home repairs and things like that. Um, there's no profit in developing houses that are priced below $180,000. So private developers are not really doing a lot of that when they could go build a $300,000 house and make a lot more profit. Uh, there's a lack of infrastructure in a lot of small villages uh, and not just infrastructure but also code uh, which leads to blighted housing and then there's a serious lack of contractors in the United States of America right now. Uh, in the next 10 years uh, there's going to be 10 million unfilled jobs in the residential construction trades and uh, there's no uh, plan to fix that right now. Uh, there's still a, 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 there's a work in progress in order to encourage people to uh, seek out vocational trades as an educational opportunity and a career choice, uh, but we're still working on that. The good thing is Habitat is one of those organizations that works to solve these problems while improving communities and quality of life of not only the people who work with us, but also the people who volunteer with us, who donate with us, and the communities in which we build houses. So what is Habitat? Well, Habitat was founded at Koinia Farm in Americus, Georgia by Miller and Linda Fuller. Uh, Koinia Farm was an intentional community uh, that was focused on working in partnership with each other to accomplish goals. Uh, they started by building one home per year and uh, on the Koenia farm on half acre plots. Today, every six minutes, someone around the world gets keys to their new habitat home. So we serve over a million families a year now uh, in, in, across the globe as a worldwide mission. Uh, all habitat affiliates, which is what we are, is lo are locally owned and operated. So we are overseen by a board of directors here. We make all the decisions in our service area. Uh, our goal is to help our families and our, and our clients build assets and independence. Uh, homes are, are the largest asset that a lot of people have in their life, and our goal is to provide that. Our programming is based on the hand up, not a handout model, uh, which means that we do charge for our services uh, in, in, in our housing program. So all of the uh, all of the projects that we do are repayable back to Habitat, but that money goes back into building more projects or completing more projects or building more homes in the communities that we serve. Um, 
we also have restores. Uh, we have a restore in Lancaster. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. If you haven't been in the restore recently, I would encourage you to go. We've made some significant changes to the restore. The biggest one is we have air conditioning now, uh, which is really good for the summer months. Uh, but we've also done some reconfiguring of the space and repainting inside and outside of the store. But the restore helps us fund our mission while providing uh, usable goods at a low cost. And we are not government funded. Uh, we do receive some government money, a uh, small amount of government money for house builds, but all in all, we are, we are not government funded. We are funded entirely by donations uh, within the communities that we serve and grants from foundations. A lot of people ask, well, what does Habitat do? Like, we see the houses being built. Well, this is the businesses that are under our typical, uh, typical Habitat roof. We're a fundraiser. We advocate for affordable housing. Obviously, we're a nonprofit organization. We're also buying and selling real estate. Uh, that is something that we do in-house. We service all of our loans in-house, so we operate just like a bank. Uh, we have to have all the training and certifications and mandates that a traditional bank would have because we service all of our mortgages and loans in-house. We run a retail store. We develop property. We're a construction company. 80% of the projects that we do are done with volunteers uh, under the supervision of uh, construction staff with Habitat Southeast Ohio. And at the same time, we're also providing educational opportunities on how to repair and maintain homes throughout our service area, uh, which we're hoping to expand in the future because we know that people uh, want to learn how to do that. Uh, who is our agency, Habitat for Humanity of Southeast Ohio? We cover a pretty wide section of uh, Ohio. This is our coverage map. Uh, the little Habitat logos are where our offices are. We have an office in Fairfield County. We have one in Zanesville. And I'm actually joining you from my office in Athens. Um, that's where I'm based out of. And uh, we service an eight county region in Southeast Ohio. Uh, our region is the largest geographic multi-county affiliate in the United States. Um, we cover 10% of the state of Ohio by geography. Our organization right now completes five or six home builds per year, though we did have to knock one build off this year because of COVID. Uh, so this year we will do uh, four to five. In all of our programs, we serve over our housing programs, we serve over 30 families per year. And we run all of our housing programs with only eight staff uh, in the entire service area. So I like to say we're small but mighty. Uh, we get a lot done. And uh, one of the best things about the Habitat program is that it creates permanent change in the lives of families and low-income families. And a lot of people, um, and I'm sure a lot of you who are on this call see this happen all the time, a lot of people uh, have a certain a definition or a perception of what low-income is. And part of our role is to redefine what low-income families are. And we work on that every day because a lot of people in society don't understand that the low-income individuals in our community are bagging our groceries at Kroger. They are taking care of our sick and dying in hospice and at home health care and doing many other things in, in society that are such a need uh, and that they are not getting paid a substantial amount of money for. So Habitat works in partnership with, with those people to try to help them increase their quality of life and improve their housing. How does, how, how does Habitat work? Um, families apply for all Habitat programs and they must have some sort of housing need, either overcrowding, substandard housing conditions, or uh, housing affordability. They have to have a willingness to partner. Habitat families do sweat equity with our organization. Uh, and they also have to pay a zero interest mortgage back to Habitat or a zero interest loan. Um, all of that money stays local. Nothing goes to the international mission or to the national mission. We keep all of our money within Southeast Ohio so that we can continue to uh, create projects and create opportunity within our service area. Uh, just a little bit about the ReStore. The ReStore sells uh, new and used uh, furniture, appliances, and building materials. It's locally owned and operated. Our affiliate owns the ReStore. Uh, donations help reduce landfill waste and provide funds for Habitat. 
Last year, the restore diverted 350 pounds of landfill waste. That's a lot of poundage. That's uh, a lot. And um, we hope to hit a million pounds sometime in the next couple of years uh, as we work towards creating uh, more and more revenue for the, for the affiliate operations through the diversion of, of waste out of the landfill. Uh, a lot of people ask me, does habitat work? Uh, what, what are the outcomes? Uh, I mean, yeah, great, people get into housing and that's one great thing, but what are the outcomes to the community? Uh, some, some numbers that I could give you about Fairfield County. Since we started building houses in Fairfield County, the tax revenue that has come in through property taxes has been over $850,000. Um, that's a substantial thing, as a lot of people think that our homeowners do not pay taxes. They also think that uh, we give houses away for free. Obviously, that's not, neither of those are true. Um, we also have a less than 1% foreclosure rate uh, throughout our programs. And it's been proven that Habitat for Humanity programs help reduce crime and blight uh, while raising property values. Our ultimate goal is to, to re eliminate blight while at the same time building affordable housing. And obviously, self-sufficiency is the ultimate goal of any Habitat program. So with that being said, all that stuff, I will open it up to questions about our um, Habitat and about our affiliate. And then we'll move on to the next section. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have any in the chat. All right. Okay. I must have rocked it out then. Okay. All right. Um, oh, wait, hold up. I just got oh. one. Uh, let's see. You mentioned that for many, 50% of their income goes towards housing. Do you provide any financial guidance or education for those that family served or any other financial education for those seeking to buy homes in the future? So we do. Um, we, we do have HUD certified uh, budget counseling classes that we offer. Right now, all of our classes are being done out of Athens, uh, but we're working on online modules that will be open to everybody, uh, not just Habitat homeowners. We're working on that through a partnership with the credit unions throughout Ohio. Uh, we should have that online sometime here soon. Um, in addition to that, we hope to be able to bring in some additional programming to Fairfield County like Financial Peace University, the Dave Ramsey programs, um, as well as other opportunities. Uh, one of the other issues with housing affordability is energy efficiency. And so we want to help uh, educate people about that as well. Uh, some very simple things that you could do in terms of improving your housing situation if you own a home or even if you rent, um, like programming a thermostat can save 35% to 40% on energy costs on a month. And those things also help uh, with housing affordability as well, because I know several places uh, where we are um, pulling families out of in, in housing situations um, their utility bills are five, six hundred dollars a month because of how poorly insulated and how inefficient the the uh, mechanical systems are in the house. So, so stay tuned on that stuff. I think that's all. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll move on to the next section, which is what's going on with habitat in Fairfield County. Well, a lot. <laughs> um, as many of you may uh, have known or may not have known, uh, Habitat for Humanity of Fairfield County consolidated with my organization, Habitat for Humanity of Southeast Ohio. And what that means is that they, Habitat Fairfield County is now part of Habitat for Humanity of Southeast Ohio. So we're overseeing all the operations in Fairfield County. We are in the process of, of making some substantial changes. Uh, the first thing that we did was we went into the restore and did some improvements to the store um, based on what we knew customers wanted to see and also what the community wanted to see. Uh, in addition, we have launched three programs in Fairfield County that I'm gonna talk about right now, uh, all of which the applications are open in Fairfield County. 
Uh, the first program is a microfinance program. Our microfinance program is focused on providing small loans for quality of life issues for um, people in the communities that we serve. Uh, the loans can be used for housing, housing, home repairs, so, uh, or they could be used for appliance purchases. Um, if you need to uh, purchase a washer and dryer or uh, if you need a new water heater, loans can be used for that. They can also be used for car repairs. If you have a, a need, if you need, you know, an, an engine rebuilt, or if you need something like that, you can use the loan for car repairs or medical devices that are not covered by insurance, like lift chairs um, and other medical devices that would allow people to continue to stay in their homes or to get back to their homes uh, once they recover from a surgery or a life event, a medical event. All of our microfinance loans are repayable at zero uh, interest over one year. Um, our income guidelines for the microfinance program are 20% to 90% of the area median income. That's pretty substantial. Uh, a lot of middle income families can also take advantage of our microfinance program because of the uh, income guidelines. So like for instance, a family of six can be making $60,000, $70,000 a year and still be able to take out a loan through the microfinance program. Uh, but they can also make substantially lower than that. The primary goal of the microfinance program is to take a proactive approach to addressing issues around housing uh, so that they don't become issues in the future. The other reason is, is because uh, we don't want people to go to rent to owns or to payday lenders in order to get uh, purchase goods or to get capital needed to be able to do things uh, within their homes or for with their car. Uh, we can provide that alternative so that they don't have to do that. So that's our microfinance program. Uh, we Again, the application process for the microfinance program is open. Um, if you want to view more information about the microfinance program or a, a start the application process, you can visit our website. It's habitatseo.org. And there's an online submission under the microfinance program that'll start the process. Uh, the next program that we offer is a critical home repair program. This is a lot different in that um, Habitat actually does the repairs. In the microfinance program, we provide just the financing. The critical home repair program, we actually do the repairs. Um, it's a little bit more narrow, but it does provide more money for assistance, up to $5,000 to assist with critical home repairs. We have been seeing a lot of roof repairs uh, through our critical home repair program and larger wheelchair ramps, um, retaining walls. It, it, it runs the gamut, but it has to be a critical home repair need. Uh, it's not an emergency assistance program, uh, but it's designed to deal with a large issue before it becomes a much larger issue. Most of the families that apply for the critical home repair program are not Habitat homeowners. So you don't have to be a Habitat homeowner to apply for critical home repair or the microfinance program. The critical home repair program has a repayable loan period of five years, 0% interest. Again, the income guidelines for this program are 20% to 90% of the area median income. So it's open for a lot of middle income families as well as low income families. Uh, same thing with uh, this program, it's open right now. And so all, all the people have to do to begin the process is visit our website and uh, fill out an online inquiry and uh, they can go ahead and apply. The last program that we're currently offering in Fairfield County is our home ownership program. We're really excited about this one. We actually just opened up this program two weeks ago uh, this is the one that Habitat is known for uh, and what we do. Uh, this is new, new home construction and purchased by low-income families. 90% uh, of the house is built with volunteers. Usually takes us about four to five months to build a house from start to finish. Our homes typically sell around $100,000 and the mortgages are between four and $500 per month and that includes taxes and insurance. Um, Sometimes uh, they're lower, sometimes they're higher. We can't really uh, 
figure out uh, taxes and insurance, you know, they change uh, yearly. So it doesn't necessarily stay there, but they're affordable nonetheless. And since we've uh, serviced all of our loans in house, we're able to make adjustments if necessary and work with families. Uh, we, like I said, we just opened up the application process for the new uh, home ownership program for a home that's going to be built this time next year in Pleasantville. Uh, it'll be the first new habitat home for at least the last five years, I believe. And this is new homes, like, like Habitat has done repairs and rehabs in the, in the last couple of years uh, in Fairfield County, but I don't think they've done a new home in the last five years. So we're excited to bring that back. And once we start building homes in Fairfield County, we're not going to stop. So in 2022, we'll actually be building a home in Lancaster, and we, we anticipate that we will start building two homes per year sometime in 2023. Um, and hopefully continue to grow from there. But a lot of that's gonna depend on how much the community supports Habitat and how much um, we can get uh, the community engaged in, in housing issues. Because once again, we're, we do get some government funding, but the government funding that we receive is less than 10% of the total cost of a traditional Habitat house. So the rest has to be raised locally um, through donations, or through uh, gift in kind and um, uh, for like gift in kind, like a plumber donated services or a contractor donated services. So those are the three programs that we are offering currently uh, in Fairfield County. And I'm open to any questions about the three programs. If anybody has any, I'd love to uh, answer them. I don't have any in the chat. You guys can unmute if anyone wants to ask a question. You guys are making this real easy for me. You're covering a lot of good information. Maybe there's just really no questions. All right. Well, if you think of any, we'll take care of them at the end. Okay, so how can you help? Or how can anyone help? Well, there are several ways to get involved with Habitat right now. Um, we're looking at starting a Fairfield County committee that will focus not only on uh, talking about Habitat, but talking about affordable housing in general and affordable home ownership, but also helping us to raise money for the mission. Uh, in addition to that, we're currently taking volunteers at our ReStore. Uh, we do require facial coverings in the store. We do require facial coverings for our staff and volunteers. Uh, and so I, I understand the inconvenience associated with that, but we'd rather have our people healthy uh, and working towards our mission than sick and at home or worse. Um, you could donate to our ReStore by donating building materials. Uh, you could also uh, donate financially to the ReStore uh, or through our organization. We have a program called Hope Builders, which is a monthly giving campaign or giving program. You could sign up to give five, 10, 20, $25 a month uh, through the Habitat Hope Builders program and all that money goes towards providing uh, affordable housing in the community. Uh, and you could sign up to volunteer uh, on our build sites. And we have build sites all across Southeast Ohio. For instance, right now, uh, we're building in Gloucester, which is just north of Athens. And we're also building in Junction City in Perry County, which is about a half hour from Lancaster. It's actually less than that uh, if you don't get behind a truck. Um, so uh, we're currently in, uh, we just finished the roof in Junction City and we're getting ready to hang drywall in Gloucester. Uh, just because we're not building a house in your area doesn't mean you can't come out and volunteer with us. We love having volunteers from all throughout Southeast Ohio on any build. We'll also this fall be starting to build in Malta, which is in McConnellsville, or sorry, in, the, in Morgan County. And we'll also be starting to build in the spring in Zanesville, um, which will be a community build. And uh, we, a word on volunteers, we, we have no experiences required to be a volunteer with Habitat. Our model is a teach first model. So when you come out to volunteer with us, you may have never swung a hammer in your life. And that's fine. We're going to teach you how to do that. You know, if you've never laid shingles before, by the end of the day, you will be a shingle laying master. 
Uh, we will teach you how to do everything that you need to do uh, when you come out here. Our construction site supervisors have a combined 60 years of experience in construction and uh, they are very good teachers. Um, at the same time, we're able to move very efficiently with unskilled volunteers. We still complete houses in about 16 weeks from start to finish, uh, which is great. And, and uh, our volunteers are very passionate. Uh, we also provide volunteer opportunities for people who um, have uh, developmental disabilities. We have several opportunities. Uh, we work in a partnership with uh, SECAR here in uh, Athens County, and they bring uh, clients out all the time to paint. They also do other volunteer uh, tasks with us, and uh, we view them very, as very valuable. They, they are... Um, they come out, they have a good time. Our site supervisors love to have everybody out. And uh, we, can, we can work with, with anyone who wants to work with us and has a passion for what Habitat does. Um, we always tell people it doesn't matter if you wanna write a check, if you wanna serve on a committee, or if you wanna swing a hammer, or if you don't know what you wanna do, Habitat will find a home for your willingness to serve the community. And um, we will find a role for you. So if you want to get involved with us, uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, my email is Kenneth, K-E-N-N-E-T-H, at habitatseo.org. Uh, and we can discuss uh, anything, really. Uh, volunteering, wanting to talk more about affordable housing. Uh, want to try to solve some solutions, want to create a partnership with your agency or with a community group like Rotary or, or anybody like that. We're open to all that. Habitat Southeast Ohio is about innovation and collaboration. We want to collaborate with agencies. We want to make things happen. We want win-win partnerships because we feel like that's the best way to transform communities and where we live. And so we're open to all of that. So with all that said, my final slide, questions <laughs> about anything. I do have one question. Um, United Way Community Care Day is coming up and someone asked, are there any local projects we could participate in for that day? Because they structured it a little different this year so we could choose what we wanted to do. Do you have any mm -hmm. opportunities like that? We have some on our restore. Uh, we don't have any, any uh, construction projects, but we do have some stuff at our restore that we could definitely have some volunteers come in and help us with. If anyone's interested in putting a group together or wants to come out, they can just email me and we'll get you set up. That won't be a problem at all. Okay, that's the only one I have. Does anybody else have any other questions? Everybody's really quiet this morning. Nothing, nothing going once. Oh, wait. Um, Andrea wanted to know, have you gotten involved again with the Housing Coalition? Yeah, so um, I, my plan, so I was at a couple Housing Coalition meetings myself. And the unfortunate thing about having an eight county region is that we have eight Housing Coalition meetings to attend. Um, every month. And so I'll be having our family services director get involved with the housing coalition in Fairfield County moving forward. Um, so she will be uh, probably attending meetings uh, from, from here on out for the housing coalition. But the housing coalitions in every county are an essential part of creating advocacy uh, for affordable housing, but also linking services uh, across agencies. And it's um, it's needed. I just wish I had more time <laughs> to be able to devote to all the housing coalitions. So, One of the ways you talked about getting involved was being on the committee um, mm -hmm. for Fairfield County. What does that look like? Like how many hours, you know, what do people do that are on those committees? Yeah, good question. Well, it's a relatively new thing. And um, until COVID's over with, obviously, we'll be meeting virtually. But, you know, the, uh, the goal would be to, the commitment would be two to three hours per month. Um, you know, we will be having a monthly meeting, but the, the goal would be two to three hours per month. And we want to put together a, a, a committee that's strong that encompasses all types of um, categories of individuals within the community. 
um, you know, business owners, realtors, um, low income families, uh, all sorts of, of uh, mixes of people so that we can talk about uh, how Habitat can grow in Fairfield County and how we can start solving some of the housing issues. I know the housing disparities in Fairfield County. I grew up in Fairfield County, went to Fairfield Union. Um, I'm very familiar with, with what's, what's going on in Fairfield County related to housing and how it's not only impacting individuals, but also impacting communities uh, and neighborhoods, uh, which is where the quote unquote magic happens in, in essence with people getting together and solving community issues at the neighborhood level. And we know what's happening and we want to be a positive force in neighborhoods and communities. So two, three hours a month, and we hope that uh, to have a strong committee sometime by Christmas. So. Um, okay. Are you still involved with the Miller Building project? Good question. Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, so the Miller Building, uh, the, the Miller Building project was a fundraiser uh, with Fairfield County Habitat. And uh, while we appreciate the historic preservation elements that were associated with that um, and, and the necessity to, to preserve the building, uh, it, it kind of runs counter to, to the mission of Habitat and, and it's what we would consider mission drift. Um, and so we decided to uh, transfer ownership of the Miller Building to another entity that focuses on preservation of older buildings and, and they have done a miraculous job of uh, repairing and rehabbing that building and, and bringing it back already. So uh, transfer of that occurred in, in uh, February and um, they've already done significant repairs to the building uh, that, that Habitat could not do uh, as part of the, um, and as it, while it was under Habitat's uh, you know, organization. So we're focusing on getting back to our mission of providing housing opportunities for families. And we know that our resources need to be there because we know how big a problem it is in Southeast Ohio. Do you know what they plan to do with it after they're finished with the repairs? Yeah, I, my understanding is that they're going to um, they're going to preserve the building and offer tours of the building and things and turn it into a historic landmark designation. Um, I know that the the repairs that are going to be made are going to be it's going to take several years in order to get that done. Um, I'm not sure if anyone was aware, but uh, VPL uh, went in and did an assessment of that building back in 2014, and at that time. Uh, they, they said that there was about $2.9 million worth of repairs that needed to be made to that building in order to bring it back from uh, its, its state that it was in. Uh, so I know that the repairs are going to take a while. I believe that the plan is also to turn a portion of it into an event space um, in the future. And I can provide contact information uh, to the current owner or for the, for the current owner, if anyone wants that, uh, I would just have to dig it up because I don't have it with me. So just send me an email and I can get that information to you. I don't have any more in the chat. Um, everybody's really quiet. <laughs> it's usually not this quiet. I know they're all there. Okay, well. Anybody, anybody last call? Nope. All right. Okay. Well, if anybody wants to get involved with us, just reach out to me. I've got no problem talking with anybody about housing. If you have any questions about housing or if, uh, if you work for an agency and you need a support letter, uh, talk to me. Uh, let's, let's try to see if we can work together on these types of things. And, um, if you could like, feel free to get involved with Habitat. We'd love to have you or your clients or your family or anyone involved with Habitat because it takes a community to build a community. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day.